Okay, all right, so thanks for joining me in this next video or this video. The last time we went over, we just practiced our code. We went over a lot. So if you if you practiced that code with me last time, you, you learned a lot. And um, if you didn't learn a lot, just go back on that episode and keep on practicing that episode until it clicks for you. And once it clicks, you know, you're gonna get the concept of coding down. But on this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn calling functions. So I've got Unreal Engine here. Um, the documentation and we're just going to go through this documentation together about calling functions because we're getting so close to the point where we can affect the character actually inside of the Fortnite engine. So what we're going to do is we're going to run through this documentation together. We'll learn it together. So let's go ahead and look at lesson five calling functions. Now, really functions are about why why do the same work twice? if you don't have to, all right? So far, you learned how to create constants and variables and store and use values and how to make decisions and code using the if expressions and decision operators like and and or. Now it's time to learn how to write code that you can easily reuse in your program. Now remember from lesson two that an expression is the smallest unit of a code that produces a result and that when an expression executes and outputs a value that the value that it outputs is called the result okay just remember that these are just terms that we should just remember because that's how we're going to refer to them going forward <clears throat> you can take advantage of this to make your code more efficient expressions can be combined with other expressions to create functions and functions can be used over and over in your code without having to rewrite what they do each time so functions will help you to save a lot of space and a lot of energy when you're writing your code, if you can master how to write functions. So let's look at how to use expressions inside of functions. So a function, which is also referred to as a routine, you know, I never heard nobody call that, but cool, uh, routine, it's, it's reusable code that provides instructions for performing an action or for creating an output based on an input. Functions are made up of combined expressions. So to define a function, this is what you need to do. You need a unique name or identifier is what it's called. Then the type of information that it will result. And then we need what function, what the function will do when it's called. And what it will look like in your code is going to look like this. <clears throat> so the, here's the unique identifier here, the name. And then it has a parentheses, just blank right here, open and close parentheses, space, colon space then the type meaning we went over the different types in a couple of videos back and it, you know it's like a float a logic whatever type that you choose here but that's the type and then you press space equals and then on the next line you write your code block here which is seems to be indented so that's how you write and call a function you'll learn more about uh, these little code blocks here in the next lesson but for now you just need to know that the code blocks is where you're going to put the expressions that you can use to build your functions all right going down a function is basically a sequence of expressions that you have named right a program uses a function by calling that function by its name so the call invokes or activates that function this is called a function call so what this means is that instead of repeating all the expressions you put in the function over and over, you can group them together into that named function. Then each time you call that function in the program, the computer will refer back to that function and execute the expressions inside of that function. For example, instead of saying coins per mouse chop, always having the value 100, you could write a code that would change the value by choosing random value each time it runs. And that, that would be like a function. So here's how you could do that. Here's a function called get random int. And this function can be called like this. Uh, in this example below, the expression is set to generate a random number from 1 to 10 using the expression get random int 1, 10. So if you wrote that, that would give you a random integer between one and 10. And the reason why I know that is because this right here, get random int, this is the function. Here's how it breaks down. Get random int with the open and close, 
This is a built-in function in verse. That means pretty much what it sounds like. It generates a random integer. So this is a function that's already been built in in verse. And you'll learn as we're learning coding along the way that you're going to pick up little tidbits. And these are things that you should write down so you can remember because this will come in handy. If you ever need to get a random integer, well, now we know the function to call, which is built in. We don't have to build our own function to do that. Sorry, built in. Uh, 1, 10, it shows the numeric range it could generate in. If you put 1, 100, it would get a random int between 1 and 100. So that's just the range. Um, note that the range goes inside of the parentheses, which is part of this expression's name. So that's where the range would go at inside of this function. So if you ever call this function, just put the range you want right inside the parentheses, just like here. <clears throat> this is a function call because it tells the computer to call the function that gets a random integer in the range you set from 1 to 10. When you want to use that function in your code, you can call that function by name. Each time you call get random int with the parentheses, a new random number will be generated. So you can use this to randomly change the price of the mouse trap. And here's how they would do it. So first they would set a variable called coins. Now remember when you're learning this code, it's really cool if, you know, while you're learning it, these things that you're seeing on the screen, like when they put blocks like this, it copy it down in your um, Visual Studio. Just practice writing your code. I'm trying to tell you, it'll make you faster. <clears throat> but this is just an example. So first thing they did was they set a variable called coins, and this variable is an integer, and that integer initially equals 500. Cool. It's a variable, so remember these coins can change. Then they set this is a get random or coins per mouse trap, right? And coins per mouse trap, this is not a variable. This is a constant, and this is also an integer, but the integer equals a function. And the function that it equals is get random int between 1 and 100. So now when you print uh, coins, start at coins. It's going to refer to coins, right? Um, and then you can set coins equals coins minus coins per mouse trap. So there, therefore, any time it gets coins per mouse trap, it's going to take your initial coins, 500, and subtract a random number one or between one and 100 from your initial coins that is what this is and then when you finish this code off you could say print and then put a string after buying one mousetrap coins is remember these curly brackets means it's going to execute whatever this is before it prints off this line so we're asking it to execute coins in order for it to execute coins, then it needs to figure out uh, what coins minus coins per mouse trap is. So that's what we set right there. So, <clears throat> man, great. Thank you. Notice how almost every line of code in the example above has a comment that explains what the code does. This is helpful both for you when you return to your code after some time has gone by and for any other programmers who want to add or modify the code that you wrote. All right, so just you know, go over this lesson right here. This is functions. These are very important. Just how to know or how to manipulate functions and know what they are and how they work. But let's continue on here because there's a little bit more in this lesson that we need to learn. Let's learn about these. They're called methods. So remember back in lesson two when you learned about uh, how a type defines which operations can be performed on values uh, stored in a variable or a constant? There's also other things that you can do. So the same way that types have operations that belong to them, they also have functions that belong to them. These functions are known as methods and must be called a special way. So how would you do it? Instead of calling them by just writing their name, like print or get random int, these are functions right here. A method call must start with the name of the variable or constant followed by a period, then the name of the method. 
For example, calling the method pounce on a variable cat would look like this. Cat, which is the variable, dot pounce. So that, that tells you the difference between a function and a variable. A function will be called by name. A method must start with the name of the variable, which it does here, cat dot pounce. And it would act like this. So that, that's the difference between a function and a method. That's very important. We need to know those. Cool, let's look at classes. Now we're getting really close to the point, like I said, where we're about to be able to affect the actual code for our Fortnite character. So classes. A class is a template you can use to create things that have similar behaviors and properties. A class is a composite type, which means that it's made up of a bundle of data from other types. When you define a class, the data for that class can be inherited by any subclasses. A method then is a function that it, that's attached to a class. So basically they're just simplifying it for you. Because of this, not every method works with every type. The method has to be declared in the class definition for that type or in a class that type inherits from. So if the, the meth, every method is not for every um, type, it has to be declared in the class definition for that type or in a class that the type inherits from. If this doesn't fully make sense yet, don't worry. This is just a quick introduction. You're going to get more classes on this later. So all we have to remember from this one is a function is a named sequence of expressions that you can reuse. Functions are also known as routines. Functions save time and reduce errors because you don't have to repeatedly type or maintain multiple lines of the same code. And when you reuse a function in a line of code, you do this with a function call. A method is a function that belongs to a certain type and must be called on a variable or a constant of that type. So remember that the method and the functions, they look different, so you can identify them differently and they'll be called differently. Classes are composite types that let you combine data from other types, then share the behaviors and properties with subclasses. So classes are a way to group your information together. If you've been using Unreal Engine 5, you know about classes. You know, like there's a character class, for instance, and in that character class, it holds all the stuff about the character. Um, this is the same way. This is just broken down into code. So on the next episode, what we're going to do is we're going to practice the stuff that we learned. And like I said, we're super close to being able to affect our Fortnite character. With this stuff right here, you're going to be a super, power, a super powerful developer. Because um, it's not like you're going to be... Like people could show you how to do, hey, look how you do this. But you're going to know why you're doing what you're doing by following this tutorial. So thanks for joining me, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.